good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever it is that you read this in the future. Welcome to another episode of Comics. Uh, my name is Luis, and this is episode 61. Looking at the audience? Yes, it is. 61. Are we the uh, audience? <laughs> I, I, I didn't mean oh. audience. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, and speaking of such, uh, um, I'm hosting today, and so I'm going to throw it around the room of who we have to talk shit about, navigate these wonderful waters of nerd news and entertainment, starting with... Hi, I'm Andres. Hey, this is Ash. What's going on, everybody? It's Esteban. And I'm Carmen. Hello. And we are the wild stallions. <laughs> no, we're not. Um, uh, so here we are for another episode. Thank you very much for tuning in, uh, clicking on the link, uh, downloading us on Spotify, Apple, wherever it is you're listening from. If this is the first time you uh, check us out, welcome. Uh, just to lay out a little bit of the format, uh, we eventually do get into uh, nerd news entertainment and talk about everything new that's come up in this week and what our thoughts and opinions are on it. Uh, we definitely get sidetracked. We talk about a lot of shit in between, uh, but we'd like to start the episodes with discussing a drink of the week of what is it that we're drinking today. And uh, we essentially go around the room and uh, maybe if you already know about the nerd news or whatever maybe you can learn about a new tasty alcoholic beverage and so for this week's beverage i have andres take it away my good sir hey there so today i am drinking this uh it's a collaboration between a uh, great notion and 450 north as you can see it there it's called uh, the floor is smoothie so you can see it's kind of like a tiki lava motif there and this is, if you cannot tell, it's a tart smoothie style ale with pineapple, cara cara orange, dragon fruit, passion fruit, banana, and natural flavors. And it is very good, not that tart, pretty smooth. Um, it's very flavorful and enjoyable. So cheers. Cheers. Here. This is stupid. Uh, uh, maybe a stupid question. It's a, because uh, you said it was a sour, right? What's the what's the percentage on it? So this is a to uh, tilt my head. It's a six percent, so fairly light, not too too strong. All right. Wow, fun. Uh, well, cheers, cheers to you. And all right, so then that takes me to our next portion. We're going to go into the comments. Uh, so once a week, we like to discuss uh, the comments that were left by you guys. It's your opportunity to be heard. Give your opinion of the last episode. If there's something that uh, one of us said, or maybe even Ash specifically that you disagree with and you want to contest, this is definitely the platform for you to be able to do that. Um, and so we uh, just try to kind of navigate through and give you the spotlight. And so starting with... Last week, <laughs> there's a comment on probably our most popular video on YouTube called <laughs> Batman Loves oh, Superman. God. <laughs> it will never die. Uh, and uh, it's going to be our legacy. It, I mean, between this now, the, uh, the legacy is definitely going to be uh, Ash's wife. Uh, I still get. Oh, the shot. Uh, yeah, the shot, the, the clever shot or whatever. Anyway, sure. so uh, this has become oddly enough, one of our more popular videos. And it was something where we recently discovered how to do video editing and we just cut up the Batman vs Superman trailer with uh, romantic music and made it look as if it's actually like a romantic comedy between, or like a love story between Batman and Superman. In any case, uh, Batman loves Superman. And uh, we have a new comment from a Miss Mayara Sophia, and she commented two peace signs, two wedding rings, two diamonds, two kissy emojis. And I responded on all of our behalf, true love cannot be stopped, which is what we believe. Thank you, Mayara Sophia. We appreciate the support. Uh, what's going on with C-3PO over there? Uh, and I'm moving on. Looks like he's doing a TIE fighter, or she's Find a typewriter. <laughs> no? Okay. Yeah. Right. I got nothing. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to keep reading. All right. 
uh, we got another comment from, and this is for episode 60, uh, from Zach Freeman. <clears throat> hey, Hi, there, comics podcast. SD love the Max Headroom, parentheses, 80s computer generated TV personality, vibes at the start of the show. LOL. Comics podcast merch. Shit, yeah. You know I'll represent. Uh, recommendation for the host. The guest book on Hulu. It's got two seasons. It's got some of the cast of The Office and Community. The show centers around employees that work on a vacational rental property, and each episode is a specific visitor's experience via the guest book at the rental property. Ooh. I may not I may not have explained it well, but it's yeah. super funny. Let me know. Let me know what you think. That's it Let for me know. today. I'll be in Cancun for the rest of the week. What? What? Check you later. Thanks for the yeah. First of all, the guest book, I have noticed it. I didn't know it was on Hulu, but I have mm -hmm. noticed it and it looks good. I think it's the guy from uh, Instructions Not Included might be in it. Okay. Uh, I might be tripping. I might be mixing it up with something else, but um, the guest book on Hulu. Uh, I will take your recommendation and I will, I for one will, will watch it. Who else is with me? I'll, I'll take a shot at it, sure. You got two, three. All right. And a maybe. I saw the shrug on Andres for a maybe. All right. So me, Andres, and Ash. I'm sorry. Me, Esteban, and Ash will watch uh, at minimum two episodes of Guestbook, and we will talk about it on the next episode, Zach. We appreciate the recommendation, and we appreciate you fucking listening to us. Um, you're shooting out to Cancun. Hopefully, this you the plane ride wasn't too crazy, and you can listen to some, download some episodes on your way there. I mean, we'll, I, mean, we'll, I mean, we'll try to review it if you remember. I mean, you know. Uh, it'll be high in the sky. So really, it'll be fine. Yeah. I agree. But um, you will be high in the sky. And then we have one last comment uh, on episode 60. And this is from Heavyweight. With your vast knowledge of beer and spirits... If you were to create your own comics, ooh! If you were to create your own comics brand beverage, what would you create? A vodka, whiskey. rum, whiskey, <laughs> mead, etc. Ash says whiskey. I kind of agree with it. Um, looking at you, Andres. I agree with that. Or I like me a nice smoky mezcal. But it, yeah, you fancy? Ooh. Yeah, like that could be the. Like the Frank Sinatra version of our drink, like his, the high caliber one, right? That could be nice. All right. And then, our, and, then, and then, no, yeah, no, I agree with the whiskey. I think that that'd be a great idea. And then we can have the different tiers and everything. Um, but our tagline should be the one that you use for Buffalo Trace. Get you fucked up for cheap. <laughs> Get you fucked up for cheap. Their new slogan. Um, Comics podcast whiskey. Get you fucked up for cheap. <laughs> It'll get you drunk. <laughs> you fucking fat bitches in no time. Uh, that is not my line. That is David Chappelle. <laughs> support. Please support the official release. Okay, so uh, normally I would go over to Carmen and ask, hey, what do you think? What, what kind of drink it would be? But we have some technical difficulties on that side. So she whiskey girl, too. Oh, here she comes. Here she comes. Yeah. So I would imagine that she will also say that we would come if we have to pick our own alcohol to, to a comics alcohol brand, if she, if it was to have a selection of either a beer, a vodka, a whiskey, a rum, since we're all thinking whiskey, I'm wondering what Carmen would think. Maybe Carmen would think a, a comics whiskey would be ideal versus a comics vodka the panicker, the panicker or comics rum. Pressure. What kind of alcohol do you th would you like to slap a comics label on? Uh, whiskey. There it is. And there is no wrong answer, but that was definitely the right answer. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, well, one last thing before we get into the nerd news and entertainment, which we do have uh, a very stacked list today. Um, every week, the host has a recommendation for someone. And if that person listens, doesn't forget and goes on vacation and then just stops thinking about the show. 
you're they're supposed to watch this whatever the recommendation was and mm -hmm. come back the following week and say what they thought of that recommendation recommendation could be a show a movie anything of content uh and then just come back and say hey what do you think and it's our excuse to shed some light on something that we feel near and dear to our heart but then also mm -hmm. maybe you know during this time of quarantine give you an excuse to watch or check something else out so um i have one from like three weeks ago but before Ooh. i go who had, in a month. It, all right well who's counting uh i gave uh, you to watch for halloween <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm not saying you're wrong. <laughs> you're absolutely right. Um, but, but, uh, I'll, I'll go to mine after. Uh, who had last week? I did. I had everyone. I requested everyone that was listening as well as everyone on the show to watch Dexter New Blood. That's right. <laughs> Which I'm, I am caught up. So I'm just like, has any did anyone see it? Is anyone watching it? I got to do the old school ones first. I'm not going to do New Blood. I'm going to do it. Andres, are you watching it? I, not, not yet. Carmen? Not yet. Not yet. She didn't know. I don't think she knew. She wasn't here. That's well. I mean, I'm saying if she's seen Dexter, I don't know. That's what we ask questions. So we get answers. Well, I, will, I will say it's worth it. It's it's really good. I agree. I mean, Very don't get me wrong. Good. I call bullshit on some things. But like I turn oh, the other well, cheek course. to allow the show to happen because it's still fun. Uh, but if you Absolutely. allow yourself to have a good time, like it's it's a great time. I. That's right. Yeah, you and me were going back and forth on yeah. <laughs> on certain plot points. Um, but that show really good. Uh, speaking of really good, uh, what was uh, recommended to me to watch a month ago is a movie called The Prophecy, uh, with I forget See. the actor's name. Whoa. Oh. Casey Jones and Christopher Walken. Alias, Co a alias, uh, Eli, uh, is it Eli, Eli Cotis? Tobias, some, I don't know. By, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking Casey Jones. Yeah, Casey Jones. Um, so first, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the cons first. I'm going to do it backwards. I'm going to Tarantino it. The cons, it is a very 90s movie. Very 90s. Like, in the attire, in the special effects, the practical oh, effects. Sure. Everything just screamed 90s, but as a 90s kid, like it was very nostalgic for me, even though I'd never seen this movie before. I was so impressed with them tackling a topic like this in the 90s when it came out. It came out, I want to say 92? Mm -hmm. 92? Yeah, 92, I think. And it's two things that I found fascinating. Number one is, number one is... <laughs> It was such a controversial topic because it was of, I want to say it was probably one of the first ones that challenged religion as strongly as it did. Like, uh, to like, hey, this is the story we're going to go with is angels are actually pissed that humans have souls and angels don't and fuck humans. But what the second thing that I found super amusing about it is Casey Jones is in this. Casey Jones was in a movie that came out four years after that called Fallen. With Denzel Washington, and I mm -hmm. loved that movie. Uh, the Azazel is a very similar storyline. Well, no, it was, uh, it was a demon, which argument can be made that's still an angel, but uh, but it's like that same act. I was like, oh man, like talk about typecasting, you know? Like, is there well, like we won't get it, we won't get into the lore, okay? Because uh, that's a that's a fucking rabbit hole. That oh, oh, I would imagine there's a Reddit thread about that of like it, yeah. go, okay. That makes sense. No, I'm just um, saying. I'm just saying the lore, the angel and demon lore. Like gotcha, that's, gotcha, gotcha. that's that's a rabbit hole. That fucking a dude. That's deep. I, I, I've fallen into that rabbit hole a couple of times, and the next thing I know, it's like six thirty in the morning, and I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta get ready for work. <laughs> I understand that. Bias Coteas, K O T E A F E. Excuse me, key key, K O T E A S Coteas. Got it. Cocoteus, Cocoteus, oh, 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 Cocoteus. <laughs> Rocky Cocoteus. <laughs> it's Cocoteus, it's Cocoteus. Um, okay. Um, ultimately, I thought it was I thought it was good. I very much enjoyed the them tackling this type of topic. Um, it's, yeah, I thought it was ahead of its time. So very good recommendation on that. Thank you, sir. Um, now, that recommendation to me, 
I have a recommendation for Andres. You might have seen this already, and I hope you didn't. If you have seen it, I'm going to kick it over to Carmen. Have you seen a Netflix TV show called F is for Family? I oh. haven't. Uh, the, uh, uh, Bill, Bill Burr show? Yes, sir. Oh. I haven't seen it, so I'll watch. Yeah, so give me give me two episodes of F is for Family. Super, super easy watch. Uh, 25. It is a slow burn, though. You think so? I do. Oh, I was it in from the I from the get go. Yeah. Like but then again, three, by three, it's like. I mean, the show surprises you with heart, but mm-hmm. um, I think Bill Burr to me is just one of those comedians that he can be. Just when he gets on his little rants and like his his voice inflections, just make me laugh, even if the content isn't necessarily a joke punchline like i'll put your head through the fucking wall like you know when he says that like i'm i'm laughing you know um but it's loosely based off of his childhood uh uh but yeah uh bill burr is plays the dad uh justin long plays uh uh, the brother yeah and so it's just it's just a very fascinating uh uh fascinating show i think so and it just it recently concluded um it's final season, so uh, season Three one is the final season. Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say something, but it's very spoilery, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay. Wait, maybe not, because it's ba- it's loosely based off of Bill Burr's family. Yeah, because at the end when he's like, uh, the kid makes a joke and he's like, oh, oh, look at this guy, he's gonna be a comedian someday, and then it fades out to black. You get that? That's what ends on. You just gave the actual end of the whole. But it's ba- it's loose. I mean, Bill Burr's a comedian. Like he's a, one of the biggest fucking acts in the world. Like, um, I, mean, I, I will. Think, I don't think that's that's a massive like. Oh, I don't want to watch it now. Yeah, you know, like because it's okay. Cool. Because you're not interested in it. Yeah. No, that's not. Him. No, but because Louis said it's loosely based on his life, Thank it's God. like it's obvious that it's gonna end somewhere end cheesy. You know, um, but a lot of the cast uh, passed away this past year, um, oh, and so the I'm assuming you haven't seen the final season, Ash. No, I it was one of those things like it recommended it on Netflix, and I was like, you know, how it tells you, like, hey, August 16th, something's coming out. I didn't even I got yeah. none of it, it was just there, and I was like, I'm not ready yet, like, I want to, you know, got it. Um, this last season is kind of a bummer, like, there'll be a good episode of something of content. And at the end of the episode, it will be like in loving memory of, and it'll have the person's picture side by side with the the actor uh, he played, the actor, yeah, the yeah. the character he played. And it's like, oh man, that sucks. And then the next episode, they do it again. They do it like three episodes. I'm like, Jesus, like who who's left? Like it's a very short season, and I think it was only either seven or eight episodes. Yeah, I can't really? help but feel like. I mean, the last episode definitely felt like they were like, okay, let's bring it in. Yeah, you know, but anyway, it was still really good. And that's my that's my recommendation. Thank you, will do. Yay, thank you, sir. And uh, they, they um, have arcs too. Each of them have arcs, like each of them where they go and you know, <laughs> enemies become friends, and yeah, yeah. And, and vice versa. It's a good show. <laughs> Justin Long's character is like one of my favorites, dude. It's so fucking funny. Oh, God. It was like Bobby Hill or King like uh, like Seth Green doing that voice. It took me a long, uh, not Seth Green, but uh, during um, Family Chris, Family. Yeah, yes, it took yeah. me a long time to accept it. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like that for Justin Long for that. Really? I mean, oh. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, uh, that is for our recommendations. And just the way that Zach recommended a guest book for all of us to watch. And Carmen, that's open to you, too. He said he watched okay. guest book. You've seen it? No. Oh, okay. It's on Hulu. And uh, so Zach on his comment recommended for us to watch guest book and report back. And uh, uh, so if we're, e- whoever is able to, to check that out and then we'll report back. And thank you, Zach, for anyone else that has a recommendation or that show or movie that you feel just has to get seen that doesn't get talked about enough, please let us know in the comments and uh, we'll go over it. Absolutely. All right, and moving on along into our nerd news and entertainment. 
Harry Potter 20th anniversary trailer has been released. And so we have an anniversary of these actors. Looks like everyone that's still living is coming back. Um, I'm going to go, I want to go around the room about this. I want to um, partition particularly curious about two opinions here. Uh, the first one is bobbing in his chair with excitement. Andres, uh, let me know what you think. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think earlier today they released uh, a still of uh, the main three uh, sitting with each other and uh, mm -hmm. that it brought back feels. So <laughs> I'm really excited and I'm glad that the majority of the cast is joining. And I'm pretty happy that J.K. Rawlings isn't there either. So that's pretty cool. Isn't there? Nope. Wait, so, you're, you're happy about that? Yeah. There isn't a word that she's going to be back for it. Yeah, I haven't heard anything. Yeah. She's not coming out, but yeah. So, and why am I happy is because she said something against trans people and like, uh, people who were born women and like uh, Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe both stood against her in those sayings. And yeah, I think the rightful, um, the rightful throne of the Harry Potter series lies with Daniel Radcliffe. So I'm good with that. Very powerful words. I, I had no idea, uh, but I would agree with you. Absolutely, sir. That was the biggest thing. You didn't know that she said stuff like that? Honestly, man, I um, had no idea. It was like almost the Chick Fil A thing during the same thing during the same time, right? No, she's said it a few times, so she's had uh, oh, yeah. back and forth. So, yeah. honestly, yeah, like if I'm not playing video games, I'm recording a podcast or reading comic books. Like, I, I don't. Uh, you calm down. Yeah, like I, <laughs> I don't, re I don't really uh, read much <laughs> news. Gotcha. Um, Carmen, how are you feeling about the, the reunion? Okay, first of all, um, I was not very happy about the fact that it's going to be almost over 10 years since the first movie came out because I was in high school when the first movie came out, so not to age myself, which I am, but I was like, oh, fuck, it's been that long. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, it was 20 years. Yeah, 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 yeah 20 years. Yeah, she upped yeah, it. Yeah, like, don't talk about it. No, no, it's no, like over no, five years. No. Just like five years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like last year, right? Harry was eight. <laughs> <laughs> He's 40, 40 now. Oh, wait, hold, hold on. I was just a senior like five years ago. Cool. Understood. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just realizing that fact, realizing the fact that it's been that long, and I still remember, as I shared with you guys, I couldn't watch those movies because, as my parents were very religious, they didn't let me watch them. So I had to, like, sneak watch them, you know, like, I would say I was going to go watch a different movie than I was, but I would go watch Harry Potter. So it just it's taking me back to that moment in time. And it's like, oh fuck, it's been that long. That's crazy. Um, as Sandra said, JK Rowling, it hasn't been announced that she'll be there. It's better if she's not. I mean, everybody is entitled to their opinions. Sure. Um, she said some very insensitive things to people that maybe she shouldn't. Um, but again, about Harry Potter, I'm excited. I can't believe it's been this long. This Hello. is honestly Hello. like, no, no, let's, we I, already discussed that. No, let's not even touch back on it, okay? It's it has, yes. has it been over, no, has it been over five years? Let's not touch the decade, <laughs> it's five years. Has it been over remember, five years? Remember last yes, month yes, when yes. the new Harry Potter came out? <laughs> Fuck you. He's like upping it. Ash, what are your thoughts on it, man? Uh, I came very, very, very late to the game, as you guys know. Uh, I didn't see it till it came on uh, HBO Max. Uh, 
So literally, honestly took, so you saw it last month then? Literally, much. yeah. Uh, I honestly didn't see it till then, and then it it was one of those. If you guys don't know, we do a chat amongst us all, whether it's sharing memes, whether it's sharing nerd news, whether it's just Andres uh, talking, talking to each other. Um, Andres talking shit happens a lot. Andres talking shit, yeah. Yeah, or Andres talking shit. Uh, and in this, a lot of times, everybody else besides me is watching something at the, at, at the same time. And I'm all fucking two years behind. What ends up happening is... Or like two decades behind. Two decades behind. As as it came out two decades ago. Uh, <laughs> I was watching Which Harry Potter. Like, uh, five years this? ago, thank you. <laughs> Can you guys believe this and this and this? And, and there's like either no response or like, yeah, I know. All right, cool. Like, But I would I get in, hard. Like, deeper and deeper in, what? I would get deeper into the series, Filthy. And like being that that everybody already saw it, uh, you know, it was it wasn't the same where I was because I had just seen it. And um, I have to say, my favorite is still Prisoner. I'm gonna say it wrong. Azkaban. 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 That's still one. That that was most my favorite and the last one. But other than that, um, I don't know. I have I don't have the nostalgia feel of them coming back together because I just saw it whatever like last month we uh you but, saw it last uh within this year or last year mm-hmm. yeah definitely within this year because so did i i think i saw it in january it was a uh, r- little before then no 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 never okay hold on hold on hold on for both of you for you didn't see it fast when it first released mm. seeing it I don't know, 19 to 20 years later, I'm going to believe it's five years later. Um, how was it for you perceiving what happened? Like, is it a good story that has transcended or were you like, oh, this is kind of dated? No, I thought I thought it was a really well told story. Uh, there were a lot of things that I missed. Like, I think because when you... I'm going to compare it to the Marvel universe. That's the only one that I've actually been keeping up with is when you watch them, okay. when a movie comes out and you have to wait five years for the next iteration of that saga, you have the ability to watch and rewatch and talk to your friends. And then they tell you, did you see the scene? Be like, what, what scene? And then you watch it again. Oh my God, I see the scene. And so you're overly dissecting shit. And then when that next movie comes out, you like, I want to watch the first one before I watch the next one. And then yeah. the third movie's coming out. I want to watch the first two before I watch the next one. So you're watching and you're getting all of this uh, great, like, recorded in your head. The point I'm trying to get to is I saw all of them in a span of three weeks. Mm-hmm. And so when everyone's like, what house are you? I'm like, I don't fucking know. Like, I'm not that invested to tell you I'm a house. Like, I mean, I know they explained that in the first film, but the first movie was setting up so many building blocks of the foundation of what is the series that I miss some of it, whether it was, I'm going to look at my okay. phone real quick or, you know, something yeah, yeah. Like that. I rewatched it before I went to my universal trip. The first film, I picked up so much more that I didn't see the Cause it's like, I remember certain things and it's like, that's what they were fucking talking about. And then it wasn't until the second time around that I watched the, I watched the second film or like half of the second film before my Orlando trip and they were talking about the wait which one was the one with the snake and you break its tooth to kill the, the book is that Bas- the third film that's the last one no I said the basilisk yes that uh, but that was the Basil- chamber Basil- secrets Basil- no yes. chamber secrets and so that made sense to me then because it's like oh, oh I get it snake? Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah, was a that was a had a soul shard of he who will not be named or whatever, right? My, my he will right? remain, yeah. A name or whatever, Voldemort. Um, but that shit actually started to make sense. Like I didn't know why. I was just like, okay, cool. That turns out it has to be him or that big ass fucking snake can kill things. That's cool. Like I just allowed myself to like 
I just submitted to this world and I was going to watch it, but the explanations made a lot of sense. You know what I liked about it too is I liked the, yes, it's Harry Potter, but like realistically, every character could have done a book on their uh, oh. perspective. Like, uh, not oh. Sam. That would name? be so sick. Yeah. Damn. Like Hermione's, like, like where how she got there. You know, like just different uh where she was during when Harry was doing this. Like, I don't know. Everybody, everybody, it felt like a trio instead of Harry's the hero. Because there's a lot of times Harry was like, I couldn't have passed this without the, you know. Yeah. And just seeing them mature as they got older was very fascinating too. Like when Ron was jealous, it was it the last film or the second to the last film? Uh, well, the part one and two of the Half Blood Prince would have like, like he was at ends with Harry because he had a boner for Hermione or whatever. Like, like that that was such a it was just it was powerful. Like you know, it's these friends and he's like he thinks he's after his chick. It's like now nah, I want to bang your sister. Like you know, it was a whole thing. I dug it. Direct quote from the film. Esteban, how do you feel? Uh, I'm what. There were the cutscenes, though. It's not in the movie, but if you watch the blooper. <laughs> I want to bang oh, yeah, sister. The, the deleted scenes, right on, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, I'm, I'm excited for it. I mean, I saw, I think I saw the first Harry Potter when, like, The Prisoner of Azkaban came out, you know, and, and then I saw The Prisoner of Azkaban first, and then I saw, you know, the other two prior. Me too! Prisoner yeah. of Azkaban was the first film I saw. Yeah, so... So once I got hooked on it, it was, it was, it's a, it's a good series. Um, the whole JK Rowling thing, she can go, you know, fly a fucking kite and fall off a cliff uh, for talking shit like that. Um, but uh, overall I'm, I'm stoked. I'm excited. I want to see, you know, the reunion, um, you know, see if Daniel Radcliffe mentions if he's going to play Wolverine in the uh, MCU. I mean, who knows? We'll see. <laughs> Luis is making that face now. Um, but yeah, I, I think out of all of them, uh, I think my favorite one was the Half Blood Prince. Um, out of out of them all, because yeah, and, and I think the only reason why is because from the first movie all the way up to the Half Blood Prince, like you see Harry's family or the dad painted a certain way like oh he was you know and then they, they keep yeah. saying like oh yeah your dad was you know the best and boss and that and you tend, and then you come to find out that his dad's a dick you know he's shit yeah yeah you know and he's just picking on snape and and it, and then there it kind of shows that no snape's not being a dick to harry he's being hard on him because he doesn't want him to be a dick like his dad you know, yeah, but he also does care about him because, oh. because again, spoiler alert if you guys haven't seen it, technically, you guys it's, it's been 20, 20 years, years old, it's yeah. been 20 years. <laughs> years, Carmen. Go on, ah, uh, five years. years old, five years old. <laughs> um, it, it's it, you find out that he was that Snape was in love with his mom, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> um. I think I think what what makes me I I think I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to it when they talk about Alan Rickman because you know they're gonna bring him up you know of course. um so I, I'm I'm excited to see it you know and if they end up adapting the Cursed Child I'll probably be right there watching it you know if they adapt it into a movie are we expecting them to tease anything about the new Harry Potter series because they were gonna do like a reboot on the the HBO series that would be I, don't know that would be the perfect way to like tease it i think like hey 20 years later and then and here's a glimpse of i have a question the something something did he uh he went bad but there was still like a they still he still made it snape still didn't go all the way sith lord right like he's he still did like uh in the clock tower he still like there was he did he what left room for Harry to win, right? He did what Dumbledore told him to. He Dumbledore had to die. Dumbledore was dying because he saw the black on his hand, and uh -huh. the oath with uh with yeah. uh, um with Draco's mother saying that he would take care of Draco, and so okay. he took. 
he took that away from Draco having to kill uh, Dumbledore. Dumbledore was going to die. He did what Dumbledore told him. And that's, that's the part I didn't get. Yeah, okay. So that's the part I didn't catch. Because I was like, I know he, there's something. Yeah, okay. I got to watch it again. Yeah, because that, that scene kind of happens pretty quickly. So Yeah. And that happens a lot though in that in the movie series because it's like in the books so i'm sure well explained but it's like all right this has to happen so here's the explanation you didn't get it too fucking bad here we go it's explained in deathly hollows when he's dying and he takes the memory and then mm-hmm. and goes into Domador's room and sees it that's where you get everything the explanation yeah there it is See, and that's what I mean, Ash, of like, yeah, exactly. because we only saw it once and like all the way yeah. through and like a 15 hour marathon. It's like, what? That happened? Like, you know, and it was the time, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, I was getting something, I was getting something to drink or, you know, whatever. But anyway, I digress. What I do um, hate though is when you do like it and you're like, yeah, but you know, like uh, there's like a freaking four chapters based on this one character. I was like, Homie, I'm not going to fucking read the book. And then I'm not going to shit on the movie that I just saw. You know what I mean? Like, yep, let me like yep. the fucking movie. I'm right. not going to watch the, read the book to shit on the movie. Yeah. Or vice versa. All right. And um, moving on along uh, from Harry Potter. And, oh, uh, release date for Harry Potter is... January 1st. New Year's yeah. Day. You have plans now. You're welcome. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, we're gonna, gonna wake up January 1st. <laughs> Ooh, that's very, it came out darker than I think you wanted it to. <laughs> it, it did, it did darker. I don't know what you mean about race. Wow, now I'm hanging. Wow, that's you said wow. you're not. You're not wow. You said you're wow. not. Wow, what the fuck? Hey, Kate, over there. Uh. <laughs> ooh, oh. ooh, ooh. <laughs> wow, <all right. laughs> <laughs> no respect. No respect at all. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is coming out with a video game. Uh, and that was just announced about two hours ago. Well, sneak peek of... Little, you get a little behind the scenes of when we recorded this thing. So um, there was a very popular game called Friday the 13th. And it was a four versus one style game. And so if you follow our YouTube channel, which I highly recommend that you do, uh, you may have seen a series that I posted called, or that we post, uh, called Comics Plays. And uh, we play video games and we post uh, the most, uh, whatever it is that we're playing and uh, we post it up. One of the games that I uh, that I put out was Dead, Dead by Daylight, which yeah. is a horror game of essentially one player controls the killer and then four players control survivors. There was a Friday the 13th game that was like this. And the Friday the 13th game was actually really good. And it was a very low budget game. And it had, it was cheesy. It was cheesy, but it was fun. It was a fun game. Um, and it was like a, one of those sleeper hits. It was like people bought it and it just, it got, it, it got a huge fan base. So now they're given a big budget, and so they've been given the task of doing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the same studio. So I'm excited to see what they do with uh, that property. It's on, the, it's on PlayStation, uh, uh, the one where you, if you do the subscription, it comes out monthly. Uh, is it the play, oh, play that, I don't. Oh, wait, Friday the 13th, you're saying? No, no, no. Uh, Dead by Texas, Daylight? It has Texas Chainsaw Massacre, has Freddy... No, it has no. Friday the thirteenth. You're they you're talking different. That's Dead by Daylight. That that one yeah. is that's that one. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is a specific thing. This is a different game. Yeah, okay. Dead by Daylight's really fun. I love that game, but this one is uh, specifically Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's a standalone game. Okay. And uh, uh, but yeah, so that will be coming out soon for those horror fans out there. Another video game that was announced, and I'm gonna go through the video games real quick, and then I'm gonna go around the room of. Uh, do you play? Do you give a shit? Are you which one interests you the most? We have a finally we get a Wonder Woman standalone video game that's in the works uh, uh, by Warner Brothers Studios. We have a Lord of the Rings Gollum game coming out, the untold story of his version of the story of him having the ring before Frodo finds him, like when he's already Gollum. Um, and. Oh boy. 
What's that? Bilbo. Bilbo. Ah, yeah. No, but he's already. Yeah, he's not Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, anymore. Like he's fucking. Oh, that's Schmeagle. Yeah, Bilbo that finds the ring because Bilbo has the ring. Oh. And the. Come on, bitch. No, you're fucking Lord of the Rings. Yeah. I I apologize. I am sorry. You're absolutely I wonder right. what the premise of the game is gonna be. I mean the, Just the from, to get it or from the trailer, oh. it's he, he has it, he has the ring, and then the orcs are trying to like they're looking for him. Oh, and okay. so it looks like he's battling with his personality of like, do I kill the orcs or do I hide? And but like he obviously doesn't have physical, yeah. To kill the orcs, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, the voice acting is actually pretty amazing in it. Um, but yeah, so it looks like it might be like a sneaky game. But in any case, and then the last uh, trailer that uh, I wanted to talk about was Suicide Squad. Uh, they are assigned to kill the Justice League. That game I'm really excited for because it is uh, being developed by Rocksteady which you may know from the Arkham series. So it has nothing to do with injustice, right? Correct. Nothing to do with injustice. Uh, the storyline is uh, Brainiac takes over the justice league. And so then Amanda Waller hires a suicide squad to Makes them bad guys. Yeah. Kill, kill the justice league. Yeah. So, um, uh, but yeah, rock steady. Fuck. If we could have done that, there'd be no superheroes. I know. <laughs> um, all right. So of the games that I mentioned, oh, and one last one. I'm sorry. And but this one's not fair. But there's a, a Star Wars game with no gameplay that's been released. That's why I'm saying it's not fair because we don't really know what it's about. But it's fucking Star Wars. Uh, I'm gonna start with Eeny, Meeny, My Esty. What do you uh, of the games mentioned? Uh, do you care about any of them? Any of them gonna make you want to play? I I actually care very, very much because I, being moved in now down here in SoCal, I have my own little office. Uh, so I got I got my office all set up. Uh, I just finished setting up my Xbox One again. Uh, so I got I got that all set up right now. I just, um, I ended up buying myself a, a birthday gift of a few games on Black Friday uh, for Xbox. Uh, I also got the uh gamer pass what so I, fuck yes on gamer pass dude. yeah i got the gamer pass they it was it dude i got i picked up two of them because it was on sale at target there for the three months it was like 45 dollars. i got them for like 20 bucks each so i got that uh but yeah that makes I it too up, easy to just jump into shit yeah all the all the like great a grade xbox exclusives are on the gamer pass yeah, the new, and, and that's the new the, Halo's on there, right? Yeah, it is, and that's uh, honestly the, this whole week uh, I've just been putting the discs in and letting it download all the discs because because that's the thing that that's the one thing that I forgot. Like I was very much like Xbox 360, you just throw in the disc and you play. But, you know what yeah. I mean? Well, for the Xbox One, you put in the disc, it's got to download the data and all that stuff. So this whole week I've been uploading the game, the most recent games that I bought. Uh, and uh, set up the Gamer Pass, and I've been downloading a shit ton of games from the Gamer Pass. So I've been filling that up. So my two terabyte extended hard drives at like 75% capacity now. So my sister ended up for my birthday, bought me another another two terabyte. So that one's, they, it's all hooked up. So I got like four terabytes set up Jesus right now on, on the Xbox Christ. One. Um, what did so you I'm stoked play? about it. Uh, I, honestly, dude, I, it was... Cause I had never played it uh, or I, I keep on seeing videos on it, you know, like scrolling through TikTok and stuff like that. I picked up the Avengers game. Okay. So I picked that, I picked that one up. It, it's okay. It's agreed. It's yeah. It's okay. The, the uh, one thing how, I, how much time do you have in it so far? Oh dude, I'm only like 6% complete in the main storyline. Give me, give me hours. How many hours have you put in? Like three hours. <laughs> See, are you still, are you still on the, uh, I can't remember this, the stretchy girl. Are you still on that storyline? Yeah, yeah. That's, she that's she I just think. she just she's uh escaping the refugee no the rebellion uh helicopter. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're I mean you haven't met anybody yet, right? I the only one that I met is uh Bruce Banner. That's it. See, okay. Are you on the ship yet or no? Yeah, I'm already I think I'm already okay. off the ship. 
the I mean that game does a good well of telling a story. Like it's it's like a movie. Uh, I think I think it's fun. It's fun for what it is. It's just there's not a lot of replayability on it, but you'll right. figure that out when you when you play it. It's yeah, still and, fun and when you play with the people. Yeah, and, the, and that's the thing. It's just like, it, it's like when I set up the Gamer Pass, I'm like, oh, what the fuck? Like, this game's on here? Like, if I knew that, I wouldn't have bought the game. You know, I would have just done the Gamer Pass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I also picked up the Guardians of the Galaxy game. I want that. I picked that um, one up. I've got about an hour and a half into it. It's good. I really like Is it. it? So okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have that one. I have Cyberpunk. Ooh, uh, that one I've, right there. I uh, uh, Keanu Reeves? Yeah. yeah, that one, bro, that one, I legit, I am not even kidding. That one took one whole day to upload into the Xbox because it's it. two discs. Okay. Uh, and then my sister got me Call of Duty Vanguard. I have that one. Give me, give me your information. I have it. I, ha- I haven't, yeah, I, I haven't played, I haven't started playing that one yet. But from the Gamer Pass, I ended up picking up uh gears five uh star wars fallen order um what else did i get star wars fallen order uh i picked up the the alien insurgent colonial yeah. marines something like that right oh yeah, yeah. a like, fire team yeah, she's on the cover something like that, that yeah the silhouette yeah. of the alien i played yes yes that one's fun yeah there's also that one. available on comics place by the way and then I also picked up uh, Star Wars uh, Rogue Squadron. I want to uh, try that one. I want to try that one. So those are the ones that I just recently <laughs> downloaded on there. So. You poor guy. It's, it's, like oh, you have yeah. all, you have this massive library and like you're, yeah. when you have time, it's probably only going to be like 30 minutes to an hour snippets at best. And it's like, yeah. Going through was, the catalog of games is going to consume more time than playing the games. Uh, uh, <laughs> the hard part about Rogue Squadron yeah. is that it's open world, so uh, there's not like you're you know here's where you go and you're right. fucking up. Like the bad guy could be fucking all the way left. Yeah, that's the only hard part. But when you when you're going from left to right, like yeah, it feels like you're in the Tie Fighter, or you feels like you're in the X, whatever you're in. Like it, it feels right. amazing. But that's the, that's the thing. It's like with all the new games that are that have come out for um, the Xbox Series X or the S or the PlayStation yeah. Five, like because I have the Xbox One, like I don't feel obligated to go out and get the Xbox Series X right now. Only because a lot of the games that they have put out, you uh, you just buy one disc and you can either plug it into the Xbox Series X or play it on you know the Xbox One. So I don't feel like I'm pressed or obligated to go pick up another one. Yep. The one that I'm waiting for that I want to pick up is the PlayStation, the PlayStation 5. Uh, and like I've told you guys, I haven't had a PlayStation since PlayStation 2, uh, since the PS2 came out. So, and and I want to get that one because Midnight Suns, I believe, is all our, yeah, Midnight Suns is supposed to be an exclusive to PlayStation, I think. Oh, I believe. I that. think. Uh, and then they got the Wolverine game that's going to be coming out. I think that one's also an exclusive, uh, to, that's going to be an exclusive to PlayStation. I know um, um, Spider-Man as a playable character in the Avengers game. He's exclusive for PlayStation. Kind of yeah, that. see, yeah, exactly. And then that's the thing. It's like I want to get the Miles Morales game on the Spider-Man Two. That's gonna so be so good. Out. Yeah, Miles Morales you know? is really good. So that's why I'm just kind of like, okay, I I got to be patient on that one. I got to wait for that one, obviously, because of you know the low stock of of the Playstations that are that that's happening right now. So. Right now, I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more. Uh, the one game that I wanted to ask you about, Luis, uh, for Xbox is Evil Within. Is, I liked okay, it. That, yeah? I okay. I liked it a lot. The one with the trees. It's the one with, uh, it's like it's like a white face, and it looks like it's like candle wax coming down on him. It's okay. the creative director of Resident Evil. He broke okay. away from Capcom, and he uh, made that game, uh, Evil Within. Because there's two. And it's on the Xbox Gamer Pass. The first so. one I really liked. It's a okay. genuine survival horror. Okay. Um, the second one, it, I still like it, but it, it takes it takes a step more into actiony. But like the survival horror aspect, like it's a great story, and okay. I love a game that makes me feel like it's a movie I'm watching that I also play. Uh, yeah. Which I felt that Guardians of the Galaxy did beautifully. I actually. I have no complaints with Avengers in that. Like the mm-hmm. gameplay can get a little repetitive, but 
the st- I, I I dug the story. I I dug the Miss Marvel, yeah. you know, kind of going through shit. Um, and Evil Within is very much the same way. I would I okay. I couldn't recommend that enough. Okay, so there you go. We should we should <laughs> you should you, we should do a uh, comics plays and it'll be it'll be whoever has an Xbox to jump uh, on and. As the kids say, say less. I'm absolutely right. <laughs> <laughs> Say less. Down. You can start Retro Night and do like GoldenEye comics plays and we're all together and, and talk shit. Yeah. I, I like I, their ideas are brewing. Ideas are brewing. I, I just um, don't want to play. I don't want to play Mortal Kombat against Andres. I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm bowing out on that one. It's happening. <laughs> that's his. It's happening. That's his. It's happening. No, that's, that's his. That's, uh, that's that's you already spoke it out. Yeah. That's right. No, it's to happening. Be done. I'm, not, I'm not doing it. And I'm going to buy the Nickelodeon fighters so we can play with Ren and Stimpy and all the other Nickelodeon characters. Oh, no. Uh, before I move on, uh, anybody else have anything to say about the video games that were mentioned? I got no, 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 no. Oh. No is all around. Are the new, are the new, are the crossover, if, like if PlayStation 5, is there a crossover worlds where PlayStation 5 can still play with like Xbox people? Or? That's actually, it's funny you say that when um, Esteban said that he, as a gift, got uh, Call of Duty Vanguard. The reason I said, give me your shit is because I got Vanguard for PlayStation 5. And that is one of the few games that have cross compatibility with consoles. So a PlayStation person can play with an Xbox person which at the same time can also be playing simultaneously with a PC person. So when you jump wow. online, that's a part, the thing that kind of makes it kind of like, yeah. it adds to the cool factor is there'll be a little PS, like a PlayStation logo next to your name, uh, oh, the Xbox uh, console logo next to your name, or a tower and a mouse next to the name. So it's like, you know what you're representing, yeah, but like cool. it's they're not exclusive though. It's not like PlayStation versus Xbox. So like, if me and Esteban wanted to connect, we could and uh-huh. jump on the same shit. And so it's uh, the future's coming. Uh, it looks like we're starting to play play nice together. Yeah, at least you don't feel like you have to buy one or the other. Like, oh, like um, uh, the the new DC one where Batman's dead and you're you can be Robin and oh, Batman. Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights. My that friend probably won't be that way. Xbox, but I have way more memory on PlayStation Four, so I would rather get stuff on PlayStation. Or maybe PlayStation Five by that time, but games rather... like that, they probably yeah. won't do uh, a cross console compatibility. They usually only do them with games that depend on a very big server for like online play, like yeah. a repeated thing. So like uh, versus games, uh, like, mainly gun games, like because there's like here's fifty versus fifty, and it's like they're trying to fill the servers as much as possible, and so it makes it easier to fill up. But I mean, what the fuck do I know? They could change it, but. Um, this is relatively new. Up until like a year ago, this shit never happened. It was like a gamer's dream to see this sort of stuff. Yeah, like, so I know I know it's going to be one of those things where it's like the PlayStation 5. Once I get the PlayStation 5, it would be a massive like comics plays at that point, you know? Because I know you have one and then Ash is going to get one and then I'm best, you're thinking about getting one uh, too, right? So for, and then Carmen, Carmen, you got to get one now. Oh, quiet. Assign. <laughs> New assignment. Watch uh, PlayStation Watch five. Guestbook by PlayStation 5. All right, next topic. Not in that order. Harry Potter came out 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. It's five years ago. That's right. Um, you know, decades. Esteban, you know what's great about this? is Every moment we talk, Harry Potter's gotten that much older. <laughs> no, fuck you, fuck you. No, 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 it has not. It's a spring chicken. It is. Daniel Radcliffe has gray in his beard now. Yes, he does. No, he has not. He has barely fucking hip pubic hair. What? Ew. <laughs> this got dark. I, I love that it got I mean, dark. I mean... <laughs> exactly when I say something about Daniel... Radcliffe becoming a pubescent boy, even though he's almost 40 years old. Mm. Are we going to count how many times she said pube, or are we just going to leave that out? We're going to leave that alone. Okay. We are no, going to isolate it on a loop. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you just done fucked up, A.A. Ron. You done, you done fucked up. A.A. Ron. <laughs> yeah, uh, A.A. Ron. Moving on. 
Kevin Feige confirmed Daredevil in the MCU. So I'm gonna take you back. I'm gonna take you back to a very <laughs> young, a very young Luis uh, starting this podcast. I want to say. <laughs> Uh, definitely within the first 10 episodes. Me yeah. and Andres had a discussion about whether or not Charlie no, Cox... No, no, no. no not you and Andres. Everybody in the podcast. Everybody Andres in the podcast. Headlining, headlining the opinion that who was going to come back to be that Charlie, Daredevil? That Charlie Cox was going to come back. And mm-hmm. he also said uh, Vincent uh, D'Onofrio. Uh, was going to come back as Kingpin. Mm-hmm. So he, this is how we set it up. He said, I bet you not only is Charlie Cox going to come back, Vincent D'Onofrio is going to come back as Kingpin. He's like, mm-hmm. and I'll even say Foggy, his secretary, and we'll throw in Punisher for good luck or something like, I believe is how he said it. Like, it was just very like this, 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 this and then fuck yourself. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? No, it's not going to happen. Anytime the nerds want something to happen, it doesn't happen. You're stupid and you should keep <laughs> Like whatever. So stupid. First of all, that's where you, where you fucked up. The no. fact that you called Andres stupid. On I didn't say it to his notion. face. I said it behind no, his no. back, though. A hundred percent. But <laughs> see, that that's where you already lost. So anyway, she's just mad that Harry Potter is thirty years old. That's true. No, he keeps, no, keeps giving no, up. No, <laughs> we not bring that up. Thank you. Um, he's got a locker that. now. Excuse me, we're not my ass. Yeah, yeah. So, so see, to yeah. keep my ass. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So what happened after <laughs> is uh, we we discussed on how confident that was that that wasn't going to happen, and he said, "Motherfucker, if it does happen, I need you. Like, what are we going to do? There has to be some sort of repercussion." It's like, okay, if it gets announced that. Like when we see it, not fucking rumors, has to be official shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If I see Daredevil, Charlie Cox in an MCU film or show or whatever, I have to take a shot of hot sauce. And we bought this specific hot sauce, known famously on Hot Ones. Um, and so I've had it, I still have it. And we all tried, like, we were so, we bought it, we were so stoked when this was announced. And then they're like, I have this hot sauce. Do you want to just use it? And then we all fucked ourselves up with it after all anyway. And so that's still a thing. Um, looks like this is real. And it's looking no, more bro, like... It's you not, it's you not, honestly know real. that you're the only one that said Wait, wait, no. wait, wait. Hold on. Louis, Are you, you still in denial? No, no, I'm not in denial. I'm saying it looks like it's real. The fact that Andres fucking beat you, he was right all along. It's like it's like cue the Halo intro, the like Halo the music in the background for Andres. Blowing Andres. up and right. shit, exactly. Andres, you were right. Rocky. You were right, but I still don't respect you. So moving on. No, I'm just kidding. I'm right. That's all. <laughs> you can keep your like, fucking respect. I was just like, uh, I'm right, so it doesn't fucking matter so, what your opinion yeah. is. So I mean, there is a very solid argument that Foggy could probably actually come back. And if Foggy comes back, then uh, Paige, what's her name? Karen. Karen, Karen Page. Karen. Oh. We don't, see, but those weren't confirmed yet, but yeah. I can see that happening. Like, it, it seems the hardest thing was getting Charlie Cox back. The fact that we got him now, it's like, dude, anything's fucking possible. And everyone loved Vince, uh, Vincent D'Amafrio's uh, portrayal of Kingpin. Kingpin. They loved it. And he came and like congratulated Charlie Cox for you know coming back. Like it feels like good job, kid. Like, cause my shit's about to come. Like they're about to announce. Also, if we can get a little snippet of my shit's about to come, it uh just edit it so we can add it into different things could be great. Absolutely. Yes. That's good. Um so anyway. Um no, no, no. Andres, no. uh, you were absolutely right. It's 20 years, two months, seven minutes, and <laughs> 57 seconds. So uh, we'll, we Nine. will still discuss how the the bet will be paid, uh, whether it's going to be a standalone or if it's going to be during an episode. Uh, I remember one of the shows that we did, it was like we had 10 shots to get, or it was like five shots that we had to give to Ash or something, and he'd be in the Eight. middle of a topic. Eight? 
It would be like, uh, take, a, take a shot. And then he would just have to take a shot and he got like really fucked up. So we could potentially do that with hot no, sauce, I guess. But I yeah. Ash said that he would match whatever both of you were going to do. I almost that, forgot about that. that. You're absolutely bet. right. Yeah. Absolutely right. He jumped on board with that. So, uh, exactly. I forgot. I, I fucking forgot about that. I would have. Yeah, that's what happens when you call Harry Potter old. <laughs> I'm not fucking Dumbledore, bitch. You're not what? No, no. Esteban. No, you're you're not even. No. What? Are you not what? Are you okay? Did you hear what she said? No, nobody heard what I said except for you. On that, on that inappropriate comment. Rewind 30 seconds if you guys want to hear it. Uh, no, 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 nobody fucking rewind. <laughs> I'm going to A for this, Luis. And if it is both Vincent D'Onofrio and Charlie Cox, you're doing both shots back to back. Or mm-hmm. how's this sound? Uh, Carmen gave me this idea, and I actually think it sounds pretty horrible, but uh, worth it. We buy the, the Pocky chip, that hot. Carol, no, the the Carolina Reaper chip, and then I dip it in the hot ones, hot sauce. The hot sauce. And I because eat that chip. okay, for the listeners, do you remember when um, Luis and Andres lost against me and Esteban? They still haven't paid up for that because they swore they were gonna beat us. So. I'll just, uh, you forgot. I was extremely intoxicated and do not remember much of anything. After. <laughs> so whether I, you were extremely intoxicated, which I am currently, um, I, I still will, remember the fact that you have not paid your I, debts as a Lannister or not a Lannister, but as a Lannister would withhold. You have not paid your debts, so Luis and yourself, Sir Andres, you have not paid your debts. So you still do owe us that. And the fact that you owe us the debt from Charlie Cox showing up as their devil. Maybe not you, Andres, but Luis. You definitely double down on that. So you owe us that much. You're going to put the hot sauce on the package chip. That's what I'll and do. you're going to fucking eat that i will wait 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 hey, wait hey, maybe stop making bets because you seem to lose an awful lot <laughs> motherfucker that other one i was on your team <laughs> wait it was probably your okay. idea okay i see i i see carmen's um idea but i raise you this what if you crumble up the pockies chip okay you put it into the hot sauce, okay? And then you take another Pocky's chip nope. and then use that as your, no. as your dipping. Because a, a coworker of mine bought the Pocky chip and huh. he was like daring people to eat it and he broke off like a third of it. And I'm like, I'll eat that shit. I ate the hot ones hot sauce. This ain't shit. This was worse. This was so much worse than the, the hot sauce. So I the say fact that I'm going to bind the two, it's going to suck. Crumble it up and make you do a line of pocky chips and just inhale it. <laughs> and that'll instant be- death. And die. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that'll be discussed. Uh, we'll discuss the, the, the conditions of it uh, off air. But uh, but that no, everybody know that that's coming. My suffering will be out and it will be content. And please share with your friends. Okay. <laughs> uh, Movie and actually, and Ash is gonna die. Like that's gonna suck for him. Sorry. He's been oh, very much so. Oh, uh, exactly. Yeah. Because Ash, if you don't remember, decided that he was gonna match whoever was going to lose. Yeah, or- he was gonna match the loser, which would have been exactly. either Andres or myself. But the bet's not over yet because if Bernthal doesn't get casted, that means. Uh, I agree. We'll uh, take- Are you at? Oh, okay. This is a one by one type of situation. Yes, that's what it we is. said. Yeah, what have we done? 
does it? What if he does it? And then in a year, Brunthal's like Punisher. Does that mean you now take two? Sure. And then you do it too because you, everything that exactly. Brunthal does, you said you do with this, this was you in your I lose and then I lose. Like I will that. match forever. And Stefan tried to stop you. You're like, you don't know what you're doing. No, no, no. I'll do it. You, the loser does. He had Ash that day. He had very much open mouth injured foot syndrome that day. He had that was, the, show. that was eight shot day, wasn't it? Was that the same show? I don't think was so. It, it wasn't. I don't think so. He had so. he had Jose Cuervo. Wasn't eight shot show my fucking when I was holding Baby Yoda in my arm and I was all fucking no all... no that was a, that was another show. A different show. <laughs> Turns out you get drunk a lot. <laughs> uh, Survey says sir next up, <laughs> <an> intervention <laughs> season two we quit drinking. Uh no we don't. And okay. then we lose viewers. <laughs> <laughs> and we- the subscriber count goes down. <laughs> um. Anyway, so that's coming up soon. Please, we'll- Ash, drink. Please get drunk. Oh, that reminds me. Um, Andres, <laughs> you bought a board game, right? Of the Hot Ones Hot Sauces? Uh, so that? That's what I was thinking. I was like, hey, I bought it, and I don't think I've received it. I have to go back on my Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you saying, like, oh, this yeah. would be fun to play when yeah. quarantine's over. And that wasn't fucking cheap either. It was like forty five dollars. I'm gonna jump on my Amazon and see what the fuck happened to it. Please look into this. All right. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, Nick Offerman is cast as Bill in the Last of Us TV show. Does anybody have any thoughts on this? Okay. I don't know a lot about the Last of Us besides the fact that I've seen it played by uh, Twitch. Streamers, and I no, have sure the, the out- outline. Like I have the outline idea of what. Thank you, Ash. Um, of what the Last of Us is, right? Um, but it's Nick Offerman, so I am expecting like a genius, fucking level, sarcastic ass comebacks. Yeah. Um, what is it? Uh, Parks and Rex. Love him on Parks and Rex. So I'm expecting that fucking type of level of sarcastic out on the the Last of Us game. I don't know the character that he got casted as. I don't know what he's supposed to portray, but the fact that I'm expecting sarcastic Nick Offerman from Parks and Rec to this video game world somehow translated onto it I'm expecting the same thing yeah um correct me if I'm wrong but it is like a perfect fit for the character that he's portraying just because it's a little bit dry it's a little bit like out there but not really but it's just unexpected enough where it's like this is the actor that I could play what we're requiring to play I, I'm going to go with yes because of the world that they live in it's a very walking dead type of world uh, okay. so I feel that it would fit beautifully in that type of environment like to have that witty sarcastic borderline asshole character you know but underneath has a heart of gold is what i'm guessing um mm-hmm. i'm excited just like you i'm a big parks and rec fan so uh excited to see what that would entail ash uh it's not the character that i thought it was gonna be uh when we first chatted about it uh but at the same time um it's very much a pivotal character where we where will pivot from, but we don't never we don't know if we're if they're gonna try to do the two games in one movie or if they're gonna do exactly what we saw, but in a movie in part one and two. Um, Tommy was the character that I thought he was going to be. Uh, in that I thought he was kind of, uh, I thought it was gonna be. 
something detrimental happens where a secondary character becomes uh, a pivotal character. And that's what I thought he was going to be in that, um, you know, comedians kind of take a fucking chance on, hey, I'm a comedian, but I could really act. And that's what I thought this was going to be. But uh, Bill is just as good. Like, we just don't know what, just because they're that in the in the video game doesn't mean they're gonna be like look at Harvey Dent. Harvey Dent was gonna be fucking uh, Two Face, but the way Billy D. Williams played him, that guy wasn't gonna be Two Face. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah. there was plans for it, but uh, that would have been a really big stretch. But we don't know how much that particular character is gonna be in the movie. Is all I mean. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be funny, which I would have liked. Cause same, yeah, but not a bad thing. No, not um, at all. I'm curious to see what the I mean these video game iterations are going to do. Uh, uh, we have the Paramount Plus exclusive Halo uh, got its first teaser trailer today, and that's another video game series that I'm an absolute fan of. Like to the point where uh, I there was a point in my life where I was getting into it as deep as I was getting into Star Wars, like where I bought novels to read backstories of shit that was happening in the background of like, that wasn't talked about in the video games. Like I got in deep. I think I read like six books. I played the games. Ash. No, I have a question about that. Do they do the game and then the, they do a paperback and try to make all that all make sense. Or does the develop the game developer know where you, do they talk to each other? And then this is what it's going to be. They kind of like up. a, like, like we always talk about Star Wars, like they kind of fill in the gaps. Is it like the paperback version of that? Yeah, yeah it okay. is. So um, except where the Star Wars books were canon and then they're not canon. Now they're like, they're, I forgot what the word was that they used. The, not being canon. I forgot the, the word that they used. But yeah. so the way it worked with these books is there were, it, it started off with three books in the Halo series. Fall of Reach being the first one, which was the origin story of the main character. Um, the middle book was essentially the game. You just the, exactly everything that happened in the game is happening in this book. And then the third book is what happened right after the game. The funny thing is these books came out before Halo 2 came out. So when Halo 2 came out, had nothing to do with these books. So there was like a parallel story. And the Microsoft Studios don't like fucking went all in. And so they started making these Halo spinoffs. They had Halo Wars, which was a strategy type game, Halo Wars 1 and 2. And so they have these other off battles happening. Yeah. And so there's a lot of content. There's a lot of lore to be told there that I absolutely adore. And I I have a lot of weight on this Paramount Plus show that's coming out. Uh, but video game movies are not known for being good. They're usually fall really short. Like I haven't even is it seen. Is it gonna be a live action, or is it gonna be like a Resident Evil live action? It always okay. Yeah. Um, and speaking of Resident Evil, that was actually the very next thing I was gonna say. The Resident Evil movie that came out two weeks ago hasn't been getting good reviews, um, but they rebooted it, so it's not uh, Wes Anderson, whatever. Me and Esteban went, went to Universal. And it wasn't getting good reviews then, and that was like October what seventeenth. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't getting good reviews <clears throat> before it even fucking released. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, but there were like shot for shot scenes that looked like it was pulled out of the game, which was like, oh, this is cool. But uh turns out it was so I don't know. I'm still gonna watch it at some point. Now I'm not probably not going to the movie theater for it, but but yeah, it's still happening. But video game movies are typically not known for being that good. Uh, like it seems comic books are the rare exception as far as an adaption like anime ad- being adapted to to movies are are traditionally not received well um, Cowboy Bebop is another one that just recently got cancelled it was announced uh, on December 8th that they are not going to be renewing it not to say that you shouldn't watch it um, I've been watching Cowboy Bebop and I enjoy it personally for what it is it reminds me a lot of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World which Mm. you can see that there's like these fantastical effects where you can see the person's love of anime and comic books by the uh, what i mean is the director 
Mm -hmm. like they'll do these extravagant kicks. The backgrounds are colorful. Like it looks very video gamey, anime, -y, very much like Scott Pilgrim. So I loved that type of attention to it. The cinematography is beautiful. Like it's very, very out there. I I would argue the reason people didn't like it is people that were fans of Cowboy Bebop, which I have never seen. I've never watched an episode. Uh, but the way, I mean, if the characters of the show act a certain way in the anime and if they act differently in this show, I can see that bothering people. But I have no reservations for it. So me as an outsider, I'm just like, this is enjoyable. Like, I'll throw it on. I think I'm like four episodes in. Ash? I just think there's a bunch of masters you have to serve. You have to serve the masters that made this thing great in the freaking first place. And then a guy that's never seen it, yeah. you have to get me there as quick as possible. But it's the fucking Titans thing where I've never seen any of the Titans. I'm a big Batman fan. Never saw any of the Titans. But you're fucking doing Death in the Family tomorrow just because that's what you know. Do you know what I mean? Like, you're trying but, to get... Yeah. But how does Marvel How does Marvel have the, the secret code to that? Because Marvel has hit these because they hit you with lines. you know why because they hit you with this is your story this is your story this is your story we will no, get but I think that Marvel like paced off an homage to what the story was even if they don't get it right correct like they don't get it like verbatim what it was but they're still like saying this is what you may have found on the on the comic book this is what we're going with now and then this is what we're gonna go forward with right uh but dc hasn't gotten that formula um this is just like okay this is what we've read somebody read on some comic books and blah 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 like we're just gonna give it to you and we're not going to explain why or how we got there or whatever. Like, you're just supposed to know that. Um, again, let me revisit Marvel. I don't think Marvel was successful on, um, oh, fuck, what was Eternals? Eternals. I know that I have talked about it uh, in the recent shows. I don't think... Eternals was a successful Marvel movie as far as what they intended it to be. It introduced some characters that uh, I'm sure that we're going to get to see in all of their Marvel projects, but it just, it doesn't feel like they got to spend that much time developing the relationship, the audience to the character. It's a little bit, it reminds me a little bit of DC of like, this is what you're expected to know, yeah. right? And so it's a little bit frustrating that we're getting that from Marvel because we're not used to that from Marvel. And it's like, this is what we're used to from DC, but this is not what we're used to from you. So, okay let's let's go with it we're just gonna accept it for what it is because you're marvel eventually you're gonna explain it and blah 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 we we'll give you the benefit of the doubt with dc we don't have that luxury we don't have the luxury of explaining characters or what they are or what supposedly the audience is willing to have them be um so it's just a little bit like grasping a straws of what we're supposed to want or even know, you know what I mean? Cause it's yep. like. See, I mean, but I mean the same thing doesn't taste the same when you regurgitate it. Right. And I right. would agree with that, but there were there have been <laughs> there have been things that we've seen uh, that Marvel has done that doesn't follow Bye. the comic book, but it's new and it's original and it feels like oh wow this is a cool vision of it, but for some reason Cowboy Bebop but, hasn't been received that way. But let me give you okay, following that statement that you just said, it's like but at least Marvel made the effort to tell you okay this is what we're revamping this idea. And this is where we 
pulled it from or at least give you like this is the enchant or whatever where we pulled it from and like now we're packaging it up and giving it to you so cowboy bebop was not successful for a audience Maybe yeah. not perhaps the fact that it was like the core audience that knows yeah. the comic to go forward, but it's like it didn't capture enough people to say this is where we're going to build from. You know what I mean? Right. Because I know that we talked about it. I know that you shared it with us, Louise. And honestly, when it came out, I, uh, I have no interest on watching it. Like, uh, honestly, but not because it's bad or because it's not something unknown to me. It's just like, okay, get me interested in it. There's no interest You're in that. Pre- yeah. Exactly. If your previews didn't give me interest in it. You didn't explain what was happening. Like, you're just showing me these characters and what's going on. But, like, how am I supposed to get interested in this world to when f- there's like two other worlds over here that I'm supposed to be interested in, which is Marvel and DC? You're not wrong. And it's like, I mean, I didn't understand it. I only watched it because I knew it was an anime, but I didn't understand that each episode is almost like a standalone. It's almost like a buddy cop show. So uh, okay. the two lead characters are uh, bounty hunters. And they're collecting bounties. So the cowboy bebop part is they're space cowboys. So they're bounty hunters. And they're broke. And they just try to capture bounties. And then you... So every episode is like them going from case to case to case. And then there's maybe 10 minutes that progress a story. But it's mainly about like... Like there's the serious one. And then there's the jokey one. And they're both like... It's a typical buddy cop type thing, but all the fight scenes are very anime and flashy, like Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Like, so I encourage you to watch an episode. You know, uh, I thought it was that's entertaining. What's that's what's hard. Like, you you don't satisfy the true fans because you're gonna tell the story that you've already told, yeah. or you try to satisfy the core and try to get us who's never seen it. That's a fucking hard. That's hard. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So yeah, I mean, I but dig it. I feel. I do feel that you're more forgiving if you're gonna tell the story we already know because it's a live action version of what we know. Maybe, mm-hmm. but again, we just talked about Harry Potter where they shat on the live version because there's <laughs> your goddamn cat. There, there's see we're trying to go somewhere we're not going to show every fucking episode you know what i mean in a movie yeah. or, or in a netflix series that you've already seen shot by shot because you're going to shit on that we're not going to show we're going to cut out whatever we choose to cut out but you're going to shit out on you know this character had a whole season dedicated to him and you just showed him getting a cup of coffee like you're never going to fucking be happy Fuck you. Tell your fucking story. Yep, That's all. Yep. Like, just figure out a way. You tell it a different way. Tell Whatever. I didn't like uh, Iron Man 3. And a lot of people didn't like Iron Man uh, Dark World. But or, stick no. to your guns and just fuck it. We'll make it make sense in fucking uh, in the next Avengers. Week. We'll make it. We'll make no. it all make sense. Dude, nobody liked fucking Tobey Maguire, fucking emo Tobey Maguire. But I still don't. We will make it make sense later. Like you yeah. know, you know what I mean. Like that's that's just been the best thing about Marvel. It's like okay, we accept, we move on, and we're going to make this work. This is probably he was doing meth. That's why fucking <laughs> Tobey Maguire was dancing. How we accepted Tommy McGuire punching a girl in the face. I let's let's go ahead and do Again, that. But we're we're just gonna exactly. choose to move on from that. Exactly. It was her choice in her body. <laughs> <laughs> it was her choice to get punched in the face. Ah, come on, man. 
<laughs> anyway, so um, but yeah, so that happens, and video game TV shows and movies are known for not having the best reviews. But uh, what are we gonna do, guys? Come on, what are we gonna do? They do have they do have a Halo for Destiny something like there's little whatever uh claiming not claimation what am there, I there there's a couple animes yeah. that came out for yeah. it and there's like little sh- like commercial shorts like yeah uh, before um I, I think we talked about this a couple weeks ago but um oh my gosh I'm I'm, I'm spacing on his name Peter Jackson produced yeah. him uh district nine director and Elysium director. Oh, uh, Neil Abby. Blomkamp. Neil Blomkamp. Uh, he was initially the one that was tied to uh, uh, to the movie. Steven Spielberg mm-hmm. was going to produce it. Mm-hmm. And then Spielberg pulled. And then Peter Jackson was going to produce it. And Peter Jackson is the one that pulled in Neil Blomkamp. That was a docu- documentarian. And then when that ended up going Peter Jackson pulled out and so Neil Blomkamp already had all these set designs created District 9 which you can see the Halo inspiration from it and then new Halo you know comes out so it's 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 lived and died a lot of times so I'm curious to see where what version of it that we get but we don't have to wait too long in about a month we'll find out okay oh, you better hope I don't edit because Peter Jackson pulled out will be put on your tombstone. Pulled out, and then I say something about coming or whatever I said earlier. <laughs> um, all right, so that takes us to our last two comments. Uh, there was a. We're only on comments. Oh, Wait, sorry, hold on. We're topics. only on comments. Sorry, topics. Last two topics. Oh. Uh, <laughs> my second to last topic. At the very end, we're going to conclude. You weren't either because you asked the same fucking question. I did not it ask the same fucking asked. question. It was, it was me asked. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, there's, <laughs> there's, uh, we were going to end the episode with the uh, Hawkeye recap uh, <laughs> to talk about the Hawkeye series on uh, Disney+. Plus. But before <laughs> then, there was an updated trailer for the new Sonic film. Idris Elba playing Knuckles. We got Sonic the Hedgehog. And then we have uh, Tails being voiced by Colleen O'Shaughnessy. Uh, which is the voice actress of the video games and Sonic Boom cartoon series. Uh, Boom. So she is very, um, she's been doing Tales. Uh, she's been uh, voicing <laughs> Tales uh, for a very long time. So That's weird. I've been doing heads. I thank had you. to say it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. I had to say it. Had to say it. Only because you said you're doing Tales. Um, so, so, yeah. So it's. So, yeah, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Uh, Andres, what are your thoughts on Sonic the Hedgehog Dose? I haven't seen the first one. So I have, I have absolutely no thoughts on this. Uh, other than it seems that people like it, like you seem to be a fan, and I want this to be good for you so that you enjoy it. So uh. may it be good for all you fans to enjoy and watch it. Um, I not particularly interested but i don't want to shit on your parade and it looks like you are enjoying it so by all means may it be motherfucking citizen kane to your sonic universe jim jim carrey is a villain uh it's jim carrey from liar liar but if you would have gone really bad that's the character he plays which is it's just fun uh esteban you saw sonic right i did and you liked it, it. it was it was fun. It was really, really fun. I fun is it. the best adjective for it. Yeah. Yeah, it was really fun. I dug it. Um, so I, I kind of got a little excited about it because I know seeing that the trailer came out, you know, and then now we have tails and buckles and stuff. So it, it, it brings back a little bit of nostalgia, you know, uh, with with the movie. And just to hear fucking Idris Elba, you know, talking as Knuckles. That that part was fucking dope. Where he's, where like with all the confidence in the world, he's like, "Does it really look like I need your powers?" I know. And it, it was dope. Like you know what? It's pretty cool. Like I'm pretty excited about it. You know? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Jim Carrey. I mean, what fucking Jim Carrey, bro? I got it's a stash. Just, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like his overacting is just like all time Jim Carrey. Like it's so it, it, fucking good. It, it's you know what, man? It's gonna be one of those where. Jim Carrey is like the last of like my childhood, mm. you know, 
So God forbid something were to happen to him, because I will say when I found out about Robin Williams, like I legit cried when I found out about Robin Williams. So, so yeah, but uh, I'm pretty stoked about it. Um, I'm probably going to watch Sonic again because I know my son saw it, but he wasn't really paying attention too much. He kept like, he kept like playing with his toys and stuff like that. And then he'll kind of like stop when there's like an exciting, something exciting happening on the, on the screen. He's like, who's that? What's happening? You know? So I'll probably end up watching it again, you know, with him. Um, and then it, it, it's probably going to be one of those, you know, it's going to be like, hey, you know, hey kids, let's go, you know, boys, let's go to the movies. You know, you guys want to go see Sonic 2 and, you know, we'll probably end up going to go watch it. You know, who knows? Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Man. Alrighty. Well, that brings us to our last topic of the day, which is the Hawkeye that recap. I feel that somebody's going to shit on Knuckles the way they shit on Jar Jar. No, because, no, there's no way, dude. It's fucking Idris Elba. Friends. And it's Idris Elba. Okay, well, okay. I said it. What? What is today? Okay. Bet on it. Bet on it. <laughs> you want to make a bet? Okay. You know how they made Jar Jar, and then that was like dreads, but it was his ears. Like somebody's gonna make. No. You want to okay. make a bet? You want to make a bet right now? But they right also now. made Jar Jar right like, like Misa say hi. Like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not even going to be that. But the Knuckles thing and him having dreads and all of a sudden it's played by a black actor will be an issue. I'm telling you, somebody's going to fucking pick at it and it's going to be an issue and somebody's going to jump on it. Jar Jar should not have been an issue because it was a group of people. It wasn't like fucking Misa Misa. Like it was a group of and it was an issue for some reason. This will be an issue as well. Maybe. Knuckles will be an issue. I doubt that highly. Yeah, I doubt it too. <laughs> so, I shouldn't have bet. I shouldn't have bet that hot sauce yeah. shot. I was going to take. Be an issue. I know it's going to be. You want to make a bet? You want to make a bet? I will bet you. A bet. I'm not. It's not going to be J.K. Rowling. Louis, with so you're going to put the hot sauce on the package chip, right? No. Yeah, you're an hour ago. Are you okay? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> so yes, it will be an issue. You, Somebody's gonna. Right. I'm. It's it's gonna be an e bombs world. I'm not saying it's gonna be fucking to the point of TMC. I'm saying it's gonna be like somebody's gonna find something stupid about it, and there's gonna be some weird. I see what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. I can't say I disagree. There's a lot of stupids out there. Maybe. Thank you. Um. Hawkeye. The Hawkeye, Hawkeye. recap. Um, who in this room have seen uh, have seen Hawkeye? One episode. All right, one episode. What do you think so far? I need to watch it on my own because my significant other does not want to watch it with me. She wasn't digging it. No. Wait, hold on. Uh, what did what what did she not like about it? Uh, she thought it was kind of silly. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. I, I compared to everything else, Marvel. Yeah. Uh, because of the main, uh, the actress, right? The the girl. Um, I think Ily? yeah. She is. Because I mean, I know she's a little lighthearted and stuff, but yeah, uh, I think she's charming. It doesn't bother me. Uh, I didn't mind it. It's like the comic relief portion of yep. the show, and she's like, she's being a superhero for the first time. So there's going to be the bumps in the road with it. So yeah. that was to be expected to me. Uh, I don't know but, which. Andreas, do you agree that there's a certain, like Tom Holland, maybe has a certain charm to it that maybe she doesn't have quite yet. Does that make sense? Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, there was the 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 Tony Stark. Like, this is like this is a Tuesday for me. And there's, hey, Captain America. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there's not they. I'm not gonna say that she doesn't have it. They just have a lot of stuff going on where she has her own story. Yeah, sorry, guys. I could adequately judge since I did just see the first episode. So I'm sure I'm. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. 
did like things like the scene in the college where she destroyed the bell tower was pretty cool. Um, oh yeah. Um, how she got Ronin the Ronin suit and she met. Yeah. There's a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, there was that fight scene uh, in the auction place was kind of spotty. Like it wasn't as smooth as. But I do. Like, it's I'm it's a, it's a girl that wins tournaments that's surviving. Yeah, that's like, what I like. It's not it's not it's not perfection like fucking Shang Chi. It's like yeah, uh, exactly. this is like real life. You're not like, dealing with somebody that we both know the same thing. It's like you know what I mean. I don't expect Sorry. it like the uh, the scene in uh, Daredevil, or I don't expect it to be something crazy like that where sh- she's just murking motherfuckers. Uh, that ninja part in the alley with Daredevil, like you know this, and he knows that was fucking am- amazing. Yeah. I didn't expect That's it to be that. Your shit. Sorry, it was just a little herky jerky, and yeah. which, which is fine. She is a college age girl coming up. She, and yes, she's done martial arts, but also these guys are there to kill her. Um, right. So, thing. so you kind of get like the growing pains with it, which I appreciate. Uh, so I don't have a specific judgment on Haley uh, uh, Seinfeld portraying Kate Bishop yet. I need to watch more. Um, I was already a fan of her, so she's already going to get more than uh, some string to... to, to to pass on on my end so yeah i'll keep watching um, okay. um anybody saw more than two episodes or who only made it to two episodes two episodes all right uh esteban you first uh what are your thoughts on the first two uh i i really like the series i think it's pretty cool it's charming um you can tell that like clint's clint's done you know what i mean um the the first two episodes you're like he's he just wants to be with his fucking family bro like leave him alone you know like you can tell like he's done you know um i think it's pretty cool uh how they address certain things you know what i mean uh as far as like his hearing aid and stuff like that you know because because kate bishop does bring it up you know so there's like it's like i see i see very much like guy Ritchie editing watching it you know what i mean because there's a one there's one scene in there you know and it's not it's not very spoilery but she asks um or she she goes kate kate bishop goes oh such a gentleman you know walking on the outside of the of the street you know and he goes no i don't do it because of that i do it because so i can hear you you know, uh. and she goes, I didn't know that you that you're deaf. And she goes, how did that happen? And then it cuts to like various scenes from like Avengers, Age of Ultron, you know, of like him in like explosions. loud ass explosions, you know, yeah. which is pretty cool. You know, I'm just like, yeah, obviously, you know, yeah. uh, so that's pretty cool. Um, but to Andres's point where the fight in the auction, did it seem choppy? Yes, it did. But I blame the editing for that. You know, I feel I feel the editing was not there. You know, there's a specific scene in there where Kate picks up a wine bottle and just the way that the editing goes, it like it, it, it's there and then it like it explodes. It, it's like you can it's a very obvious. It's very, very obvious. And it was very reminiscent to watching um, Iron Fist, the fight scenes in Iron mm-hmm. Fist. Uh, you know um, mm. I think she's a great actress I really do I think she's a great actress and I think she brings Kate Bishop to life uh, kind of like in the in, from the comic books I think she brings it to life um, I can tell that this is the first time she's been in a fight scene it, it, mm. seemed, it seems mm. very robotic yeah, Transformers. No, it wasn't fight, fight, but Transformers. That, but see, that's different. Or Transformers in Bumblebee, she's jumping around and, and like yeah. trying to evade. You know, she's not you know punching and kicking and trying to you know DDT somebody. 
you know, uh, <laughs> also true. you know, throughout the entire show, you know, so, so yeah, it, it's, you can tell, you know what I mean? But, but to that point that, point that we brought up term, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, like uh, uh, the pizza guy, like, this is what I know, like, and he barely survives, like, uh, Kino. Oh. Kino. Kino. Uh, right? Yes, like, that yeah. would have been a good, like, this is what I know, like, that would have been a good version of trying to do that. Okay, sorry. sorry. Yeah, but 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 to that point, I it, it's also, I can also believe that, like, what Andres and Luis were saying, this is someone that, this is someone that's only trained via tournaments. Yeah. You know? So, so I kind of see a tournament is a very controlled environment. You know what I mean? So, I can kind of see that where it's you know, um, you know, it's your turn, then my turn, then your turn, then my turn. You know, it's not, you know, you're not, you're not fighting someone in a tournament that's using the elements, yeah. you know, that picks up a bottle to try to, you know, smack you over the head with. You know what I, I mean? I do feel like they could have used that because she uses her environment a lot mm-hmm. more than a tournament would. Yeah. So, uh, so which. Uh, mm-hmm. the- where are you on part on part two or episode I'm two? on episode three. Okay. Episode three in the bar in the barbershop. I haven't, I haven't gotten there yet. I, I <laughs> legit just started episode three. In a tournament though, even getting out of the <laughs> wine store in, uh, you're using your environment to where yep. you're, there's no way. Fucking Daniel San couldn't fucking slide around a pole or do the fucking parkour through a fucking window, uh, a, a, a window. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, uh, but again, uh, suspension of. I watch wrestling, so there's a lot of suspension of belief all across the board. But uh, sorry, it takes it takes you out of it a little bit when you see stuff like that. You're like. There's a lot of archery part that I'm like, that's what you're using to appeal to Hawkeye. But there's a the Ronin part was a little bit. Uh, it wasn't like I said. It wasn't like uh, uh, Kino where it was like I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm surviving. Like it wasn't like that. It was more like she was fucking taking motherfuckers out. <laughs> but other than that, like. Uh, I'm not thinking from a seven. Go ahead, seven. No, no, no. It's all, it's all good. Um, but it, it's like it. You see, you see where it's like where they ask where in the second episode where her uh, mom's fiance asks, or or I think it was Hawkeye that asked. You know, how long have you been training for? She goes, Oh, I've been in tournaments since I was five. You know, so so it makes sense. You know that she would be easy. She she have an ability to to fight, you know, but again, it, uh, in a very controlled environment, you know what I mean? So it, again, I'm not shitting on her acting ability. Her acting ability is fantastic. I think she does a great job bringing Kate Bishop to life. I just feel that the editing could be a little bit tighter. Uh, it could work a little bit. Uh, the editor can, you know, tighten shit up again, coming from someone that's a very noob as far as editing videos and shit. But it, it's like it, it's very obvious to at least to me when I'm watching certain things, and and I'm not by no means am I being a snob about it. It's just something that I saw right away, and and sometimes when I watch things and I'm like, wait a minute, did I just see what I thought I saw? I'll go back and rewind the episode or rewind a few seconds and like, oh yeah, I did see it, or no, I didn't see it. You know, yeah, uh, it's just playing tricks on me or whatever. You know, so so yeah. But I, I dig it. I'm excited about it. I hope that there's a season two because I think Clint Barton is, is a is he's overlooked. He's underrated. I feel he's very underrated. You know. So especially in the second episode with the whole LARPing, the New York LARPers, you know that part was cool. You know, um, but I feel I feel he's a very underrated Avenger. Do you so. think they'll do a Young Avengers, or do you think the Bro, there everything that everything that I've seen points to a Young Avengers. Right, but do you think we're going to do Phase Two with them, or do you think it's going to be Young Avengers? 
I don't anticipate a Young Avengers movie. I anticipate a Young Avengers Disney Plus series. Okay, that will lead into the next series of whatever Avengers. Maybe. Movie. Okay. Maybe okay. because because there's a lot of rumors saying that Scott Lang's daughter is supposed to you know take up uh, or put on a suit and play the play uh the i forget her role or in the comic book um who who she plays in in the young avengers you know um but yeah it's supposed to be it's supposed to be something big so but i'm all in all right uh carmen any uh any last thoughts on on hawkeye before we uh before we call it an episode um I could only say that I'm enjoying the show. Um, I was very excited by this last episode of that character that shows up, um, kind of linking movie to the show. Ah, uh, no, that that it, was already yeah. spoiled for me. So I already know. I already know what you guys are talking about. Same here. Yeah. Um. You too, Andres. For those of, We're a for, week away. Just say it now. We're a week away. No, no, no. I no. I don't want to spoil it for everyone. You'll get. It's not. It's not as big as we're making it seem. Um, it's just kind of connecting the movie universe to the uh, streaming universe or the yeah. Disney Plus universe of whatever you and how that connects to each other, mm-hmm. and then like what's gonna happen. The biggest thing for me about this show is how much he misses Black Widow or Natasha. You know what I mean? And yeah. like dealing with that loss and mm-hmm. he it was his best friend and the fact that, you know, like Haley or um she doesn't understand like where he's coming from, but she's trying to figure him out. She's trying to like read him of like, okay, like wait uh oh so you were ronin but like you regret being ronin and like you don't want to tell me that you were wrong you know like mm-hmm. all of that so it's like him dealing with everything in his past present and then like where the character is gonna go from here because he knows that he can't be hawkeye as he's known to be because obviously he's hard of hearing. He wants to spend time with his family. All he's wanted through this whole career um, is to retire and to like not be bothered and to be left alone. But it's like everything that he has done in the past keeps coming up. So it's like, okay, how do I deal with the past, the present, and then yeah. like this little girl that I just met that is has and you have to see it from her point of view, right? That it's like, okay, um, the blip happened, but then I saw Hawkeye just like being the superhero and like being this normal guy that just moves archery and like has his arrows and could, you know, like defeat Thanos or whatever the bad guys, right? So it's like, oh, I can relate to him and I could be him. So it's him dealing with all of that. It's like, let me take a breath and just be like, okay, I lost my best friend, Natasha. I got to deal with that. I still have to show up for my family and be there for Christmas, for the holidays, for the important holidays, except for the fact that I'm still this superhero that is supposed to deal with everything that I have done or that is going on. And then also be this normal person that is also dealing with like hearing loss because of everything that I have had to face. And when he tells her, like, it's not all like glitz and glamour, you know, like you're going to lose a lot of things and it's just, it's not what you think that it is. Like that was almost real moment for me when he's telling her that, because she's just like, Oh, you have been like, just, just picture it you meeting your superhero or like somebody that you have admired forever and you know like you expect them to be like this 
regal person and then they're like telling you like yes I know that that's what you see me as but this is the real thing that you you have to know about me and she's just like oh like no I just know you as a person that I aspire to be and the right doing the righteous thing all the time but it's Seeing the character conflict between Haley, actress, and Jeremy um, as Hawkeye, deal with that. You know what I mean? And it's just kind of like your dad dealing with his teenager, even though they're not related and like getting along, and him like accepting that she just wants to do whatever she wants to do even though she's not listening to him and his advice and I don't know it the whole show for me is very endearing um I have connected with it more so than I did with the uh Captain America show with uh Bucky and um oh my god what's his name okay now Yes, yeah, Sam Wilson. Um, and with, um, oh God, the couple. WandaVision? Jesus. WandaVision. Um, so this now, Hawkeye, has been the show that I have connected with the most just because it seemed the most relevant to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, we're in present time. We flashed back to 2012 when the first battle happened. You know, like, we don't know if Hay- Haley's dad was mm-hmm. killed, perhaps, by what happened with the Avengers movie, or there's something more to that. Is That still has not been explained. We don't know what role mom and... Uh, the Jack character are playing in that. We still have to find out what that's going to lead to. It doesn't seem like it's going to be good and she's going to be built for disappointment with them. Um, so I don't know. I I like this series just because it, it, I, I don't want to say it has more stake but it kind of feels more real. Like there's more to lose with this series. Not that there wasn't any reality to the other series at all, but it just kind of seemed like there were very, and I know egocentric is very, it's a bad word, but they were very like focused on the characters that they were representing. But this series to me, it's more like, okay, So this is what the people outside of the Avengers were dealing with, right? So the Blitz and like how they went about it and like how it affected them and what led on from that. So I don't know. I like this show a lot. Um, I could see how they could build and sorry for you and for Andres and how it could build from going from this to Daredevil showing up and even you know what I mean from um because of Echo or Mm -hmm. um showing on the show and her being on the same universe of um Kingpin and um Daredevil and all that build up to Spider-Man so I like the anticipation that this show has given us and I felt that it was very well designed to lead up to what's coming to Spider-Man. Like, I don't feel it's disconnected. You know what I mean? As to the ones, like, I know that I have shot on Eternals um, for whatever reason and I will keep mentioning it, but like, I feel like Eternals was very disconnected to everything else that's happening. Um, so I don't feel that this show is period. <laughs> Sorry well, for everyone here, that's listening that I went on a tangent on that. We're entitled. Here, here's the thing that I that I see is the problem with the Eternals. Uh, they they started off saying 
from the get-go is that the reason why the internals never were involved is because there were no deviants that were involved. Right. Okay? And this is where I think it's a, it's, it's a bit of a chicken shit way to get out of everything. Whoever hasn't seen the Eternals, you know, I already know what happens at the end of Eternals. I already know who shows up, you know, in the spoilers and whatnot. But this is the thing that, that that's frustrating. <laughs> this is the thing that's frustrating. They, they make it known that the reason why they didn't, why the Eternals were never involved with the whole snapping or whatever is because there were no deviants involved. Okay. Uh-huh. We find out who is at the end of Eternals, who makes the cameo in Eternals. So with that cameo stating who he is in relation to a specific character, it defeats or it contradicts why the Eternals did not get involved with with, uh, Thanos. So I I think that's my gripe about it. And I haven't seen the movie yet. Okay, this is just all everything that I've seen and just thinking it over and, and kind of like, you know, mowing over the, the, the possibilities. Okay, so, so they, made, they made a big deal from the get-go is the reason, the reason why the Eternals never got involved with the Avengers fighting Thanos is because there were no deviants involved. Okay, we find out who shows up at the very end and it doesn't make sense, you know, because... Technically, said character is. I mean, I can't. I can't really say it because it's. It's a. I mean, yeah. to to some, it's a big spoiler. You know what I mean? It's a really big spoiler. Right. But, right. But being that they focused in that there were no deviants involved in that, technically, that's a lie, and it's very. It's it's a cop out and it's a very chicken shit answer for them to go. That's the reason why they were never involved in this entire thing. But on the bright side, whoever hasn't seen Eternals yet, they should show up on Disney Plus around mid January. So there's that. Background noise. Here I come. Yeah, there you go. All right. I believe the thing that I'm looking forward to is that. Uh, uh, there's still the Black Widow sister. Huh? That should be a thing. Yolana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is looking for Hawkeye. And then two, there was a second thing, uh, but we've been going on. And uh, there was a, oh, I'm very happy. They went very, very much against type where it's the guy going uh i have to stay for christmas because it's this is what's going on and it's not god damn jim not again it's not a a stupid character where she doesn't understand the situation or she does understand but she's making it dumb like she they're they're making the character dumb does that make sense? Are like, where they're are like, you referring to Hawkeye's wife? Yeah, where you what well, I'm saying, you know how they kind of try to make that mm-hmm. like give her the nag, not the naggy role. You know what I mean? And she's like, "Are you gonna make it or not?" Because I just, I just need to be able to handle this now, rather than you trying to say that I'm gonna be here. I can handle that. You're not here right now. Yeah. Then on top of that, so what are you dealing with? Like, okay, so the happy gang isn't like she's about him and I will help you as opposed to the way they kind of the movie wise try to make it's it not a like the typical na- nagging wife, but she right. understands why he's not gonna be there. And so he, she's like, tell me what's going on so right. that I could tell our kids why you're not gonna show up, you know, so but I'm still gonna thing. back you up. Yeah, it's a together thing. Like, mm-hmm. fuck, if you know that motherfucker, I will die to be there. And it's not a fucking... I would rather create drama for the sake of drama. Like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's not... Yeah. It's, 
Yeah. Marvel's done that amazing too, where they made that character not be, God damn it, Rocky, come home. Like, no, you're making, yeah. you're, you're upsetting your son. Like, I save the world every fucking day. Like, if, if, if I'm telling you, I had to stop something to not kill this fucking college girl, or that sounds weird, but a girl that's, it's an obligation. Like, it's not, it's, eh, it just yeah. sounds, yeah. does that make sense? It just, they didn't go cliche with it where it's like, I have to tell him tomorrow that you're, you're not going to be here on Christmas morning. Like, they didn't, they just didn't make it a generic thing. And then on top of that, Hawkeye, the character has still the sister to deal with while he's been dealing with Natasha this whole time. That's fucking a great just, story. Just to see that like, struggle of him like dealing with Natasha or like the loss of Natasha and the fact well, that he has not even began to process it. You know what I mean? And yeah. it's like now he's in this situation that he's dealing with and he has to constantly face what was what happened before. And it's like, oh, now this teenage kid that I'm responsible for is like acting all brave, wants to be me, like looks up to me and like wants to know all the answers. But it's like I see Natasha in her. But like yes. I don't want to let so. her down. Very much. You know so. what I mean? Yes, and so. it's it, like I can see his an untrained his, Natasha. His just fucking str- yes. And like they have that the, banter back and forth. Like we both know we're fucking gonna die to like now. But they both talk to each other like you know what I mean? Like, especially on the rocking horse part, like they both there's no I'm gonna die right now. Like there's they both handle this like okay, so this is what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And even though she's in the same position, it's not this, the way you and I would handle it. Like, oh, what do I do? Like, it's not the same thing. It was like the whole time he's fighting. Hey, how do I get out of these fucking, like, help me. Like, just tell me not mm-hmm. just doing everything. You know what I mean? I don't know. But yeah, uh, he has somewhere to, Hawkeye has somewhere to go even after this being a, uh, uh, the thing that he's dealing with, which is the sister of the person he's probably going to, it's good. It's all good. Which yeah. is Jeremy Renner wise could be an out if he wants out. The yeah, that yeah. Black Widow story could be. An well, out. I mean, like if if we're really paying attention, like his character, right, as Hawkeye, has always wanted out. Like he wanted out well, some long out. time ago, but. Yeah, yeah, and that but, could be her. That could be her red, uh, the red in her ledger. That could be her red in the ledger. It could be a continuous God. if if he wanted out, out, out. Which fuck it's a Marvel movie. You don't want out, right? I mean, it's always a paycheck. So all right, we're good. Eleven thirty. Got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is our episode and our, our recap on, on Hawkeye. Uh, if you haven't seen and if you're still listening to this, uh, while still not seen, then a lot of things got spoiled for you and we apologize. Uh, but we encourage, you, we encourage you to uh, catch up for next episode uh, and uh, that way we can be a part of the conversation. If you have anything to add, please uh, give us a comment and let us know. We'll read on the next episode. And again, share uh, share with your friends if you know other people that like nerd shit and do all this stuff. Is uh, a like and a follow costs nothing to you, means everything to us. It really does. And on that note, I just want to say thank you for everything. We are two know. away from our goal. And we are two away from our goal. We are. T- we, we gotta are. say what the fuck is up, host. You gotta say what the fuck is up. I, I'll I'll do better. Uh, <laughs> and on that note. We are comics and we are everywhere. We are everywhere. December. We are two away from our goal. We are at 73. We want 75 by the end of the uh the end of the year. Please subscribe. Uh let's get to 75. 
before the end of the year. Chose their friends. If we get before for a hot mess. If we get seventy five before the end of the year, I will do four shots on on Thanksgiving. No, on on New Year's. Uh, okay. Thanksgiving. And you will be topless as well. Best? Shots of hot sauce. Good night. Good night. I will. <laughs>